There's history here. And here. There's history there. History is everywhere. Welcome to Jacksonville's historic Beekman House. The house was built in 1873 and it was lived in, occupied by only the one family, the Cornelius C. Beekman family. And the house is still completely furnished with family artifacts, which is a rarity today when most historic homes are occupied by or furnished with period pieces. The house is now owned by the city of Jacksonville and it's managed by Historic Jacksonville and that's who I represent. So today you're going to get a look inside the house at some of the Beekman furnishings and get an idea of some of the programming that we do here. Now we try to, uh, the goal of Historic Jacksonville is to bring historic buildings in the town to life because all of Jacksonville is a historic landmark district but without some events and activities going on, they become just old buildings. And we want them to live. We want to bring the history to life and share the stories with you. So, why, why this house is important, I've already mentioned that it was, um, that was lived in and occupied by the only the one family. But Cornelius C. Beekman was probably the wealthiest and most prominent of the pioneers who settled Jacksonville. Uh, he was a banker, he was invested in real estate, he invested in mines, he sold textbooks, he sold insurance, he was an entrepreneur. He, he took advantage of all the opportunities that were available in Jacksonville in the late 1800s. So we're, we love to tell his story and share it because it was so interesting. He actually got his start as an express ride, rider for Cram and Rogers, riding two to three times a week over the Siskiyous down to Wairika to carry gold, letters, newspapers, whatever, and bring them back. And when Cram and Rogers went belly up, he, he took over the business. He established Beekman's Express. And that's how it expanded into all of his other activities. About 1856, the, the miners were asking him to, to save their gold until there was enough to go to the Mint in San Francisco. So he bought himself a large safe. And that's when Beekman Bank started. So we'll hear, we'll talk about Beekman Bank in another time. But today you get to see about the house and all that went here. Uh, the house is it's actually, although he was one of the wealthiest men around, it's actually very modest because modesty was the ethos of the time. It was before the, the Queen Anne's and the, if you got it, flaunt it of later in the century. And Beekman, Beekman was a very down-to-earth man. And so we love sharing what he and his family experienced because that's one of the things, they experienced all the things that happened in the late 1800s, and then the children experienced them well into the 1950s. So we love sharing that here with you. We'd love to bring the Beekman House to life for you, and we do it in many different ways. We do regular Victorian theme tours, where we look at a different aspect of Victorian life through the lens of Jacksonville and the Beekman family. Some of the tours we do, they include Victorian medical practices, they took, in tour, include Victorian architecture, uh, they include etiquette. We do travel in the Victorian era. But, and then we also do all four weekends during the month of December when we celebrate Victorian Christmas. We also, though, we, we bring living history back to you, but we've moved the time frame. So you're no longer now in the Victorian era. When we do our living history, you are now in 1932, and you're visiting Depression-era Jacksonville, where you have the, everyone mining, uh, mining, digging up the streets, digging under their house foundations. You have hobos looking for handouts. You've got, um, there, it's, it's just, You've got Franklin Roosevelt is running for governor and Groucho Marx is on the radio and the Beekman children are back closing up the house with help from a cousin and help from their former housekeeper and they're reminiscing about growing up in the late 1800s but also commenting on current affairs. So these are the some of the programs we like to share with you here. 
Oh, well, my goodness. Look at all those friends that have come to visit. We were just expecting Aunt Kate today. Well, please, come in out of this heat. Ben and Carrie are going to be so happy that you've come for a visit. Just step right on into the parlor. I've been fussing around in there, and we'll visit a little bit. We thought you were Aunt Kate, and she was expected this afternoon. My, I hope you didn't have any trouble getting here. Uh, the streets are quite torn up, aren't they? My, my, all these uh, people of Jacksonville are trying to find every little bit speck of gold that they can. Uh, these are very hard times. Oh, well, Carrie and Ben are upstairs, and uh, Carrie should be down any minute now. And I've been going through her music and records to decide which ones she should take back to Portland with her. Oh, I'm so sorry. You might not remember me. I'm Lulu, cousin Lulu. I married Fletcher Lynn. And uh, you remember Fletcher, I'm pretty sure. He was, uh, you know, he grew right up here in Jacksonville and lived here all those years. Uh, we don't get down very much, but you know, we were here for Julia's, uh, Aunt Julia's uh, funeral. My goodness, what a, what a, uh, a lot of people were here to pay their last respects. You know, her casket was laid out right there in the corner of the parlor here, and um, there were ferns banked, and the family stood behind those, and oh, my. Uh, I'm sure they were standing outside. They were in the sitting room even, standing outside. They probably couldn't hear the Reverend say uh, his piece about Aunt Julia. Well. Oh, it was very nice, you know, and Car uh, Carrie's piano student played the piano and her uh, uh, students sang. Well, they played on Carrie's beautiful Methuic piano. Have you seen that? Such an such a instrument. Uncle Cornelius bought that for her in uh, the East and willed it to her in his will to make sure that she got. Now, Methuchik, he was one of the um, greatest American piano innovators of all time. And uh, piano makers after that made their pianos like his. It's gorgeous. It's uh, rosewood, carved. Uh, just a gorgeous instrument. She had her musicals right in this room. I used to tease her. Uh, we have a lot in common. Carrie and I. I I've taught uh, music at the university <clears throat> and uh, then moved to Portland and uh, sang a solo at the Presbyterian Church. And of course, Carrie uh, and Aunt Julia were, um, they are, uh, you know, uh, very involved with this Jacksonville Presbyterian Church. So we've had uh, quite a lot in common. It's so nice to have her uh, living in Portland now. Well, she and Ben are upstairs. They're going through all these things. And I told Carrie that I would just absolutely go through her records and her, um, uh, her sheet music to decide. Now, I was just about to play uh, one of the records on the phonograph. Would you like to hear? Now, this is another gift from Aunt Uncle for Carrie. He loved music. And uh, so I'm going to just play this for you. Um, it's pretty tricky, you know. You have to be very careful so you don't scratch the record. There. Oh. It's quite lovely. I think she should take this. But listen, you can control the volume by opening the doors. What do you think? It's a very nice piece. So. Well, my goodness, Carrie should be down any minute now. And, uh, oh, Carrie, there you are. Ben, I'm, I'm so sorry. Mother would be horrified. I, in the back of an old, in the drawer, I found her old pantalettes. 
Well, they date probably from 1890, 1900, but they were in such good condition that I couldn't throw them away. I thought maybe I should just put them in a box for the poor farm. Mm -hmm. They Somebody's bound to find those warm and comfortable. Mm -hmm. I, Mother's underwear you're going to give to the poor farm? Well, I thought somebody might appreciate them. I'm just so embarrassed that I left them out here when, when our guests were here. Mother would be horrified to have her underwear on display. Mm -hmm. I just was clearing out the the closets well, and the cupboards and I... It sounds like an idea. We don't certainly don't need to keep them, do we? No, no. no. And I thought somebody might appreciate them. They're still in good condition. And then the same thing with the things on the bed. These are... They've been there forever, so I was just well, going to leave those things there. That piece is older than we are. That came across... That's probably 1840s. So I know. It's been there jacquard. as long as I can remember. But then I put Mother's crazy quilt pillows there to brighten it up because the the jacker coverlet is Jacquard, really faded. Yes. But you know, Mother was so well known for her extraordinary needlework skills that I thought those were a beautiful sample and brightened up the room. And I that don't can, want everything no, that to can, be there. No, that can there. just stay, right. Yes, that's that's so, a good idea. It's a great so idea. So I thought I'd leave those as is. Well, and then so many memories with the sewing machine. This was where Mother spent hours, you know. Well, that's a beautiful place. Yeah. Coming in and... Uh, well, and she made all of my clothes when I went off to Bell Seminary. Mm -hmm. So I, we didn't have to. We were able to buy factory clothes. Mm -hmm. But she just loved to sew. But I was going to ask you about giving that away to Louise. Uh, you know? That's a wonderful idea. Okay. She sews. She has a big family. And Mother was, taught her to sew. She spent hours here. So That would... Uh, whatever you call these things go to? Dress forms. Those were mine. Those, those they were your dress form. Yes. My yes, lips are sealed are. on those. But things. they are flexible, so okay. she can adjust those to her daughters. <laughs> That's but good. yes, that, those were my dress forms. Okay. And then I've been through just about everything in the closet, but I do have some questions to ask. Seven you. closets to go. You've been through, we've, you've been through one, we have seven, six to go. Goodness. But there are a couple of blouses in there in beautiful condition, and I thought of giving those to Aunt Mary and Ashlyn. Wonderful you, idea. Well, they haven't been doing as well. No. You know, a lot of people have been suffering with this depression, and we were just very yeah. fortunate. Well, it's because Father did, did not invest in the stock market is they why we're not see. selling the house. So. Well, and then we did inherit money from the New York uncles, too. Right. So. Um, I hope everybody else is doing all right during this economy. It's, yeah. it's really been difficult. Been difficult. Yeah. Oh, Miss Carrie, Mr. Ben, I was just seeing what there was to fix you guys for supper tonight. There's a lot of canned goods in the pantry, and I know you won't be needing them when you go back to Portland. Well, you can take some things with you, but you definitely don't want to take these pickles, that's for sure. Okay. The Beekmans were so good to me and my family. Uh, when, when Floyd and I got married, they sent over a set of sterling silver flatware, except they left out the knives because they didn't want to cut our friendship. And to this day, Miss Carey still sends a very generous Christmas remembrance every year. The money sure helps out in these tough times. My husband Floyd, he's mainly a rancher, but he's between jobs right now. Sometimes he goes over to the Meneer orchards and helps his cousins pick pears. Floyd likes to say they got plenty of people to pick the pears. What they need are people to buy the pears. But really, working for the Beekmans was more like a luxury. In 1904, they installed the sanitary sink right here. Prior to that, their cook had to haul water in and out of the house about 16 times a day from the well outside. And then they had to haul the wa dirty water back out again. And this refrigerator ice box. The Medford Ice Company still delivers. You just put the sign in the window and the bottom number tells the driver how many pounds of ice you want. So much more reliable than the old cool house we had out back. And the old stove, she sure is a beauty. But I must admit, I'm a bit partial to the, to the gas stove that I have at my house right now. It's so much easier to just turn the knobs to get the temperature that you want. Back when I was cooking for the Beekmans, I had to stoke the fire and then move the, the pots and pans further and closer in order to get the temperature that I wanted. Yes, I'm definitely much more partial to the stove I have now. Oh my, will you look at the time? My husband Floyd's gonna be picking me up in just a little while. We're gonna go dancing down at the natatorium in Medford tonight. We're thinking about entering that dance contest, you know, the walkathon. They'll pay us a dollar an hour for every hour they keep moving on the dance floor, as long as it's at least 300 hours. Floyd and I think we have a pretty good chance of winning. We've been dancing for as long as we can remember. In fact, we used to go dancing here on Saturday nights in, Medf in Jacksonville at the old Oddfellows Hall. 
In fact, it was at one of those dances where Floyd and I first met. But lately, the dances have been getting a mite bit rowdy. Too many young men getting liquored up. So a group calling themselves the Jacksonville Citizen Civic League went to the city council and asked them to put a curb on sin. They wanted more police to be monitoring the goings on at the, at the dances. Well, instead of just adding more police, the city council shut the dances down. That's not what anybody wanted, and nobody's been real happy about it since then. Ugh, but look at me just nattering on. I'm sure you have better things to do than to listen to me talk, and I really must see to some those uh, supper preparations for Miss Carrie and Mr. Ben. So if you don't mind, I'll just have you come out this, through the summer kitchen here, and I just wanted to say thank you again for coming. It's been real nice having you visit, and I know Miss Carrie and Mr. Ben really appreciated your visit. So be careful on your way home. I did see some hobos hanging out on the street corners this morning. I'm Carrie Beekman, and I'm always happy to be in the Beekman house. In fact, we've been brother and sister for so long that when you ask what it's like to play the role, it's just my other self. <laughs> I'm Robert Hyde. I play Ben Beekman, the son. Uh, the Beekmans had two children, uh, Carrie and myself. So we, uh, we have a good time here. We've been doing this for some time, and we're pretty uh, knowledgeable of 1932. And I think pretty comfortable working together, so my big brother is constantly teasing me. That's There's a lot of things to tease her about. Uh, <laughs> she had a few problems socially that I tried to correct, uh, and it's successfully, of course. But, you know, marriage isn't for everyone, right, dear? Yes, that's true, and we do talk about our problems. Mm -hmm. We do share those. Yes. I am Lulu, Lulu Lynn, their cousin Fletcher's wife. And I taught music at the University of Oregon. Hmm. And uh, we don't get to Jacksonville very much, but um, you know, when we do, oh, when Carrie and I, we become such close friends because of our music. And uh, I know that she was involved with the Cre uh, Presbyterian Church, as I was, and my goodness, I know that there are many, many wonderful stories we have to tell. And we have such a good time going through all the cupboards and closets, finding out more secrets to share. And I'm Louise Meneer. I was the housekeeper here at the Beekman, for the Beekmans for many years. Um, but I was more than just a housekeeper. I actually became a good friend of Miss Carey's um, and Mr. Ben's. And it's my pleasure to be able to come back and help the family whenever I can, because they've been so good to me over the years. Um, and it's just been a joy to be able to share this time with them. Preparation after all these years isn't very difficult. I do try to fix my hair as Carrie might have in 1932 using your, what do you call those oh, crimpers? The little the, clamps. Yes, yeah, the, hair clamps. Um, so, <laughs> From the 30s. Yes, we try and then all our clothes are authentic to the time so these are all very old. We're not that old <laughs> but um, I, I think we all really are in character the minute we step in the door. Well, I think stepping in the door puts you right in character, mm -hmm. whether it's this year of 1932 or um, in past years that the Beekman House has performed. I feel that way, mm -hmm. and what I do to prepare is I read um, the information that we have, and then rather than trying to memorize, I rather put my own personality into the into the theme of it. And I think the same. I practically read the scripts. I been a docent through the Beekman House for other occasions and just kind of taking all that information and kind of incorporating it into what we're doing for this living history. Um, but just learning about the character, or the person, not character, and, um, and just trying to internalize who she was and trying to figure out how best to do justice to her. I, I appreciate the 1932 because that era doesn't seem so far away to me. Uh, my parents were married in the 1930s. So um, it, the issues that are going on there with, with the politics and the country and the economy, it just, it's, a lot of it seems quite current to what's going on in our country today. So it, uh, and we do have a good time relating it to our guests so that uh, we ex express our pleasure at them making a long trip on the dusty roads, but my goodness, with the price of gasoline going up, they can relate to that with the difficulty in getting acquainted, well you mentioned the politics, but mm -hmm. with new presidential candidates. So it's fun to speak in 1932, mm -hmm. but see how closely it relates to what our visitors are experiencing mm -hmm. at this time. Right. 
and then to share that information with him because uh, they do interact and so many of them know that period, time period as we do mm -hmm. in the stories that we've heard from our family. And it's been interesting to see when people come through the house and it, their grandparents maybe had a sanitary sink like the one that we have in the Beekman house or they had a, a bathroom that they also purchased at Sears. I mean, so it's kind of fun for them to say, oh, my grandparents used to have something just like that. And that's very neat. One of my fondest memories is when I brought my 93-year-old mother to visit and she peeked in the pantry in the kitchen and I said, you can't touch, those are artifacts. And she said, artifacts? Those are my kitchen items. <laughs> <laughs>